Hey everyone, good afternoon. I am Sean Cecil and today we're going to talk about what you owe your colleagues and your boss if they've been good to you, right? But you know that you still need to leave, right? Things still aren't working. So just so you guys know, um, February, obviously, I put a lot of time into do, doing the masterclass series. So we're going to be back to the regularly scheduled once every four days kind of videos. Um, if you haven't seen the masterclass series, definitely check that out. It's super awesome. And I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on it. Okay. So today, let's talk about what happens, right? If you're in a job where your colleagues are good to you, your boss is good to you, but things still aren't working. So it's really easy to quit a job if, you know, if your boss is, you know, being rude to you, if your colleagues are being rude to you, if it's a toxic environment, then, you know, as soon as you have a financial plan out to get out of that, as soon as you know you can do it sustainably, it's really easy to quit. But what I've found is that some of my clients have a lot more trouble quitting when it's not like that, right? They have trouble quitting because they're friends with their colleagues because their boss has supported them, because they're trying, you know, they're, they're in an environment where there's something that's really incompatible, there's something that's really not working, but there's a personal loyalty to the people who they work with and the per people who they work for. And that can be really, really difficult because how do you square that circle, right? What do you owe these people who, who have done right by you, right? But you still look saying, hey, listen, I have to do something that's gonna inconvenience them. So. One thing, you know, before we dive into what you do owe, one thing that you do not owe anyone is you do not owe anyone staying in a job that you hate, struggling with something that, that's making you miserable for the rest of your life. That is slavery. That is indentured servitude. That is not something that you owe anyone. But here's what you do owe, right? Here's, you know, I do want to tell you guys what you can do so that you'll feel like you've done right by the people who have done right by you so that, you know, you'll have, you, you'll have rewarded their loyalty with transparency and with all this kind of stuff and that you can feel really good about quitting even in a situation where, you know, it's going to cause some inconvenience in the organization. So the first thing that you do owe to the people who have been good to you is you owe clarity of thought. So think through why it is that you want to quit. Make sure it's not an emotional decision. Make sure that you have really, really solid reasons and that you know what's going on, that you know you know, why you're doing what you're doing and that you can articulate it clearly and powerfully. And then, you know, that gives you clarity, right? And it gives them clarity. And then, you know, you know, it's not just, you know, it's not personal, you know, there's no risk of people saying, oh, you know, this person was personal and they didn't tell me you're at X, Y, and Z. Because in this case, everybody knows exactly why. And it's something that's logical. It's something that makes sense. It's something that you can explain to somebody. The second thing that you owe is you owe them giving them the chance to make things right, to, to change the environment so that it works. So for example, you can go to your boss and you can say, you know, you don't give them an ultimatum and say, I'm gonna quit if you don't do this, but you can go to them and say, hey, listen, you know, Joe or Susie or whatever, I've got this issue, right? I, you know, I, I love you, you've been great to me, I love my colleagues, but this is really not working out for me and this is why and you explain the trouble you're having, you explain the incompatibility, you explain why, and you give them an opportunity to fix it, right? Maybe it's that, you know, you, you just have, you just had a kid and working, you know, eight to eight in the office is no longer feasible and you wanna work from home, you know, three days a week or, or whatever it is, right? And you give them an opportunity to fix it and they may or may not be able to, right? At that point, one of three things is gonna happen. Either they're going to say yes, and they're going to fix it, in which case problem solved, you don't even need to quit. They're going to say no, in which case they've made a choice not to accommodate your requirements, which makes the decision a lot easier. Or they're going to say yes, but not now, right? So if you're in a position where they say yes, but not now, you have to do some real thinking. And it may take a little while to sort out on whether or not it's actually going to come good or not. If what they promise isn't going to come good, even if they're trying and they have the best intention, it doesn't get rid of the fact that that incompatibility is still there. And so that brings us to number three, right? If you're in a situation where you've made the decision that either what they're promising to fix the situation isn't going to happen, or they've told you they're not willing to do it, the next thing that you owe is honesty and transparency. So as soon as you've made the decision that you're going to quit, you should go to somebody who's, you know, who you're loyal to and who's been loyal to you because, you, you know, loyalty is always a two-way street. You go to them and you tell them, hey, I've made this decision. This is why. 
And because you've already talked to them about it before, they're kind of going to have a heads up, right? It's not going to be out of the blue. They're not going to be surprised, right? It's something where you've laid the groundwork, right? And, and, and so you can go and, you know, you can do that and you won't have a problem where, you know, people get angry or X, Y, and Z because they already kind of have a heads up, right? They already know what's going on, right? And so now you're in a situation where you've given them an opportunity to fix it. They've said no, or they've been unable to do so. And then you're being completely honest as soon as you make the decision. You're not hiding anything from anybody. It's all out in the sunlight. And then that brings us to the fourth thing that you owe. And that is if you're a really talented worker and you leave, that can create some chaos, right? So what you wanna do there is you wanna help with the transition. So they may ask you to stay on for a couple of weeks or you know even a couple months. I would say the longest you should stay on for two months, right? Any longer than that, and you're getting into a thing where they're trying to keep you from actually quitting, right? So stay on for up to two months, or another arrangement is that you can have a consulting agreement, right? And a consulting agreement where you leave and you kind of help out part-time and they pay you a consulting fee. And that actually works as a really good dream bridge, if you guys have seen the webinar, a really good dream bridge so that you can transition into your new career while still making sure that you know you help the people who are gonna be taking over your responsibilities, get on board and get everything together so that they can actually transition, make adjustments in the organization, find somebody to take on your tasks and you don't leave them like high and dry trying to figure out what was going on, right? So guys, those are the four things that you wanna do if you wanna quit gracefully, right? First, get clear on exactly what it is, that's that why you have to leave. Two, give whoever's loyal you're loyal to give your boss a chance to fix it or to make some changes three total honesty and transparency once you've made the decision and four help them in the transition leave everything in good faith leave everything in a good conscience so everyone thank you very much um i'm sean cecil and if you guys are in a position where you're trying to decide whether or not you're going to quit and you're trying to figure out what you're going to do afterwards then give me a call. This is the uh, this is a number where you can book a session. It's www.oculusinstitute.com slash scheduling. I help people who are making these kinds of career transitions do so in an intelligent way. I help them get clear on what they're going to do afterwards, how to do the planning, you know, to get from A to B, and how to, you know, actually execute on that change. Um, what we're going to do if you get on the call is we're going to talk through what's going on. We're going to talk through where you want to go. And then we're gonna you know, get clear on the next steps, which may or may not involve working with me over a longer period of time. I don't know until I talk to you. We'll see, and, and no matter what it is, I'll guide you in the best way to ensure that you get into a career that's actually making you happy and where you don't have these incompatibilities. I'm looking forward to speaking to you guys soon, and I wish you the best. See you.